Now this happens and, you know what I'm saying, this kind of solidifies you. You know what I'm saying? People get to see you in action. So you're able to now, they want to promote you. How is that? You know what I'm saying? You know, now you're, you're being promoted. You know what I'm saying? Things are looking better for you. you know it was a feeling like it was, it was basically like something that you wait to happen, even though you don't want nothing to happen. You say, yo, you want to prove yourself every day. So when this happened, it was like, yeah, this was what I was waiting for to happen. So I could prove basically that I'm loyal, basically that I got hard, basically that I'm ready to ride or die. Because when you got 30, 40 people and you go into action, it's just something that I was used to doing. It wasn't something that I really had to think about. It was something I was doing all my life. But it felt good to get that promotion because, like I said, coming home, you don't know what you're doing. You don't, you, you don't know what tomorrow we're going to bring. So that just gave some, some a foundation for, for me to know that I'm getting a check every week, for me to know that I got health care, for me to know that everything going to be all right. Now, I'd kind of like to get into some of the most recent stuff going on with Diddy right now, man. So, you know, I think everybody knows Diddy has been indicted. You know, he's been arrested for racketeering sex trafficking by force, transportation to engage in prostitution. They're calling it a commercial sex enterprise. You know, what is your first thoughts when you first heard these charges and learned that he was arrested? Ah, uh, I mean, this has been going on for a while. You know what I'm saying? This has been going on for a while, but like I've said plenty of times, you got to dig deep into what these things mean before you say a person is innocent, before you say a person is guilty. You know what I'm saying? You got to really know what they talk about. When you hear sex trafficking and stuff, you automatically say, yo, it's bullshit. You automatically say it's innocent until you actually read what they call it sex trafficking. What they call it sex trafficking and what they call in these things at first you say, yo, this is stuff that people do every day. You know what I'm saying? If you holler at a girl out the country and you bring her back here, which some people don't have the money to do it, but if you're a rich person with your own jet and everything else, that's like, that's like nothing to you. So at first I basically was like, okay, that part of it is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But like everybody else, it's so many people, man. And, and, and like, I, like I tell people, man, I haven't been around Puff since 2012. So I can speak on the way that we was handling stuff. I can speak on the way security was when we was there. I can speak on what we allowed and what we didn't allow. But we talk about a whole nother 12 years when I'm not around and I don't know how loose things could have got. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I was shocked. Like, yo, for real? Like, for real? But I also know that there's other things that play a part in that. And I just don't know how bad those other things got compared to what they was when I was there. You know what I'm saying? When people get high, you can't say what they do and what they not do. You know what I'm saying? What they can control or how high they get now or what some of the new things that got introduced in their life ever since you left. So I'll just sit there in, in, in awe, man, like everybody else. Right, because I do believe I heard you say that, you know, has your time hanging with him, things got worse. The progression, the drug use, and and everything kind of got worse. Yeah, it, it, it definitely got worse, man. And it's like when you get to a certain age, you know what I'm saying, like, when you hit your 40s, you thinking things are going to slow down. You thinking like, okay, yeah, I'm with the right person because he, he in his 40s now, it's going to slow down. So instead of it slowing down, you got to remember his kids hit 21 now. Justin hit 21 now. Uh, Christian is up and coming. You know what I'm saying? Quincy. So now these are things that kind of give the average man a second life. You know what I'm saying? You know. If your son is 21, 22, and you 41, 42, you kind of could be like, okay, I've been waiting to hang out with my sons. I've been waiting to go to the clubs. But you got to do that a certain way. You can't do it and show them some of the negative things with the industry. 
You know what I'm saying? And I kind of think it went backwards to him because instead of us coming in at a regular time, we started hanging out even later. We started, you know, being around people that was getting high and doing different things. When, when, so to me, it, to me, it got worse. You know what I'm saying? To a person who's a groupie or a person who loved doing that type of shit, then to them it got better. But to me, it got worse. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm looking at the individual. I'm looking at the person I was around when I first started working compared to the person that he is when I'm getting ready to leave. And at that time, I didn't know I was getting ready to leave. So I'm looking at instead of us progressing, we regressing. You know what I'm saying? It was a couple of times that I went with him to rehab. You know what I'm saying? A couple of times that I know he went to rehab. So I know that he's trying to get better. But being around these type of people, he, I'm looking and I'm like, damn, he ain't getting no better. You know what I'm saying? It's like a person crawling. When a baby crawls, then they walk and then they run. Instead of him going backwards, he was, he, he, he was, man, he, man, the abuse was crazy. How many times would you say he tried to get better and go to rehab? And how did he keep that out of the media? Well, it's way, well, well, when you got money like that, it's institutions whose job is not to report it because then they know that they're not going to make money. You know what I'm saying? So they got a lot of places that you can go to that these celebrities go to. Same way the celebrities go to the hospitals when they overdose. You know what I'm saying? Or when, or when the stuff is getting bad and they have connections to the hospital say, yo, we getting ready to come in through the back. Yo, we get ready such and such. And they actually lay out the red carpet for your people to come through the back for you to get upstairs and you never know nothing of it. So there's a lot of places that you could go to for rehab and they never it never hits the media. Mm. Okay. Now, his lawyer recently did an interview with TMZ. And he says he thinks Diddy is going to take the stand in his own defense. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you know, uh, they always tell you don't take the stand. They always tell you don't take the stand because you open the door for the prosecution to not only talk about that case, but to bring up a whole lot of things that you might have been involved with. So, but... When you, when you feel that you're innocent deep down inside, you feel like can't nobody explain your story like you can explain your story. Can't nobody fight for your, your freedom like you can fight for your freedom. So in a thought like that, I think it's the lawyer job to definitely say that. But uh, I, I really don't have no, I would just say cross your T's and dot your I's. If, he, if he's ready for the questions that they're going to ask, if he's if he got his attitude in control and don't mind him asking those questions and he knows what's on the line, I would say take the stand. Now, if you know that you got a lot of shit that 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 it's gonna be talked about that you're not ready to talk about, I think you need to pass that up and don't let your ego get the best of you. And we all know he got a big ego. That's kind of what I was thinking too, that like this sounds like his ego is kind of like I can get I can get out of this, but I don't know, man. It's, it's... You got you got to think about it, man. When I you know whenever I I think about Diddy, I think about John Gotti, and that famous that famous newspaper clipping that said "Untouchable." You know what I'm saying? I've never had the money or the experiences that he had to ever feel untouchable, but I know that everybody. That I know that beat two or three cases and everything else like that, they got that I'm untouchable syndrome. And when you have that syndrome, that's when you go down because the, the powers that be feel like you think that you God, you think that you untouchable, and they go out their way to show you that you're not. You know what I'm saying? So you got to remember, he beat the city college stuff, uh, he beat the gun charge. It's been accusations about him all his life that he'd been beaten. So I think that he thought that this was the same thing, that this was going to blow over. And because he got money, that it could get over it. But I think he's waking up to realize that this shit is for real.
What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.